Hello, we've actually come a long way with our project. At this point, we've been able to write some sort of code to style and actually declare structure for our web page. And at this point, our browser can render this dashboard in a way that it looks very, very okay on the mobile. But we had to do much of the work on the tab and also on bigger screen. So that's what we'll be looking at in the next few videos. But in this very lesson, let's see how we can style our iPad version so that when the user visit with the iPad, they'll be able to see this project listing at least two on a roll. Then also for this segment as well, we're going to display it side by side. In fact, let me show you an example of what I mean. If you check the finish uh, project on iPad, it should look similar to what you can see on my screen. So at this point, because the screen is a bit bigger, you don't want to display just one per row. And that's what we'll be looking at. So let's dive into it. As programmers, some of the things we do most times when we write our application is to host our application on GitHub repo, which allows us to make references to any version of our program at any point in time. So similarly, this project is actually hosted on GitHub. So you can see all of the comments that was made and you can actually download any version of the program. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Take for instance, if you visit the project page where you also get the link from the video description, you can see that 13 comments has been made ever since we started this project. So if I just click, we'll be able to see how we can download any of the version. So in case you're wondering and you want any version of this program, you can just do the similar thing and you'll be able to see the version that you're looking for. So I just want this to load so that I can navigate you through how you can see all of the commits that we've made in the past. Now that it's loaded, you can see several commits that I had made in the past. In fact, you can see what's meaning or each of the comments that are used to comment the code. So at any point, you can reverse to any of this version and just download the actual code. So right now that you know that you can download any version from this very code, let's dive into a media query for today. So currently what we have right now is just one row display on iPad version. The major thing right now is we need to use a media query. Now, what makes the web actually very interesting to me is the fact that as programmers and designer, we can determine what shows on every screen sizes. That's what makes the web an interactive place for users to always visit. So let's take our power and put it to use right now. So in our HTML and CSS, we're going to be targeting some portion of our program just to make sure that they display side by side. So at the bottom of our CSS, let's just comment. In fact, let's just grab this and also comment and just call it media query. So we can say media query. So we can just specify the screen size. So it's going to be seven, six, eight pixel. So now what we need to declare is the actual media query that will help us to target every screen sizes that we want. So the first thing we want to do is just call the command and just say at media only screen, media only screen. And then we're going to put the parameter of the size. So we want the main width be main width yes mean width of 768 768 pixel then let's just open and close our coily braces so whatever style we declare in this coily braces is going to apply when only when the screen sizes is bigger than 768 pixel and if you check what we have here the ipad size is 768 so when the so when the visitor visit with any screen size that is 768 and above, we're going to render this very style. So if you look at it right now, even on the bigger screen, you're still having one role. But the moment we declare our media query from 768, it's going to apply to every other screen sizes as well. 
in as much as is more than 768. So let's see how that works. The first thing we want to target is the project section, right? So we want to target the project list section because that's the aspect that we need to display side by side. So let's inspect our HTML and see where it is and how we can actually locate it. So the projects list is just by this side. So on line 59 is where we have the project listing. So this is where we are going to target our display flex. You can see the project list div is what wrap all the project listing. So which means all these items are going to be the flex item, but we are going to put the flex on the parent div, right? So all these are now going to display as flex. Let's see how that works in reality. So I'm just going to navigate back to the CSS and I'm going to target the section. Then in the section, we want the main um, class. So any section with the main class, in case you're wondering what that means, you will see that the section that wrap everything, that very section is called main. So we want to target this very project listing. So I can as well copy the class name and just put it. So we are saying any section that has main class target the project listing. So we can just come and say display of flex. When we say display of flex, then we say flex wrap, which means we want it to wrap. We're just going to say we want it to wrap. Then we, the space in between, we want them to share the space in between. So we can just say justify content space between. Now let's see what's going on. You can already see that it's displaying side by side. But if I remove, what if I remove the justify content? Let's see the difference. You can see that they are not sharing the space between. So justify content majorly just allow you share space in between. In fact, you can share the space around, not just between. So we mean you're sharing whatever space that is left around. But I think we're just going to go for space between, which works for us. So we want to share the space in between. Now, the next thing we want to do is to target each of this item so that we can give them specific size that they should contain. At this point, they're just using size based on how the browser think it should be. But now let's specify what each of this box should take on every of the display. So how can we do that? If we go back to uh, HTML, you see that for every of the wrapper of the project, there's a class div called project. So let's try to target that. So what we can do is I'll just copy this same class. I'm just going to add project. So once I add the project, I'm just going to say they should take the width of 47%. I'm just going to say width of 47%. Let's see how that works. You can see clearly that it's displaying 47% of the display width, right? Which makes it look very neat compared to what we have before. And that's what media query and flex display allow us to do very easily. Okay, so if you look at one other thing that is going on here is that on mobile, you can see that this, our icon is pretty much looking okay, but on this is jumping up a bit. So what we can do is come back and just target this span. I believe that we wrapped it with span, which is here. So what we can do, because we know that it's inside the project container, we can just come back to our CSS and just copy. In fact, we can go ahead and just duplicate this and just extend our specificity to span. Now, what we want to do to span is just say the margin top, margin top to be like 15 pixel. 15 pixel, if we save it, you can see that the icon pushed down a little bit, but you can see that all of these things we are doing is just only applicable to the screen size from 768. If you scroll down, you will see that because 1280 is also bigger or larger than 768, the style is actually applicable there as well. So what we are going to do in the later lesson is to 
actually target for this specific size and either make them display four on a roll or three on a roll, but we are going to do that once we get to that section. This is just to make you understand the significance of media query. So let's move on with things we need to do. Now that we are pretty much sure as to how this is displayed, the next thing we need to do is to target this total project segment because the thing is, to me, this um, cell or the circle is too big to just consume the whole of this width at once. So how about we display it side by side with this layout in this segment. Let's also go to our media query and just leave a comment. We can just even leave a comment and say, this is going to be the recent project styling, right? Recent projects. Okay, what we need to target similarly, let's look at what we have on the HTML because it all boils down to how the structure of the tags are. Now, the section serve as the container, the parent container that groups the two segments. So you can see the project and the chat as well, the same way you see the recent project. So which means that we are going to set our flex on this section. And how do we do that? Let's go back to our style. We're just going to say section section then secondary we have the secondary how do i get the secondary let's check it out you can see the section has the class secondary so it makes sense so we're just going to declare all the style that to make it display the way we want so i can just say display of flex then justify content i can say space between as well then flex wrap. We don't want it to wrap this time around. We just want one row. So I'm just going to say flex wrap. I'm just going to say no wrap. Okay, so the next segment is we want the, in fact, let's look at what we have already. You can see that this display side by side. But again, I don't think we want this white background. I mean, this blue background in between. Let's just make everything like white background all true. So we can just declare our background color to be um, hexadecimal FFF, which is FF, which is white. Okay, let's check it out. Yeah, so we should have white that wraps everything, which makes a lot of sense. Another thing we can do is to add a top padding so that we can have enough space just like we have at the bottom. So to add top padding, we can just say padding top. Let's say we give it like 70 pixel. So if you check it, you can see that we have padding at the top, which makes a lot of sense, all right? So now that we have it like this, the next thing, in fact, let me refresh so that I display what is expected. Okay, so there are little things we want to do more, right? You can see that the chart is a bit complex in uh, recent projects. Let's see how we can specify the width that the chart should take and the width that the recent project should take. All of these things are pretty much easy. We just need to understand that they need to be done. So what we can do is let's target this chart and give it the size that we want. How do we know the size or where to target our chart? We can see that we have chart div that wraps the entire chart section. So this is basically what we are going to target. So to target it, we're just going to come back to uh, secondary, in fact, I like to copy this section secondary so that we can just add the charts. So what we can do right here is to just say we want the width to take 40%. We want the width to take 40%, 40%. Then we need to target the um, also the recent projects. The same way we have this here, I'm just going to duplicate this or change this to recent project. Then I am going to have the width to take something like 55%, 55%. So if you add 55 to 40, you get 95%. So the remaining 5% will be the space between that the flex is going to share. Let's check it out. So you can see that this test takes more prominent, which makes a lot of sense, right? And if you check it very closely, you can see 
that the chart is just taking a very small portion, which is fine. 40% is fine for us. Now in between is the remaining 5% that the flex is going to split between and just make a bit space in between the two contents. Now that we have it, um, the next thing we need to do again is to push this our um, option button just a bit down. So how we can do that is to target. So there are several ways to do that. We can target as many div as possible just to get to that segment. So let's take a look at it a bit. So if you check project, you are going to see that in project we have listing. In listing, then we have the span. So we can target it like that just to be extremely specific. So let's duplicate this one. Remember, what we need to do is target the listing, then also target the span. Okay, span is not a class, it's a tag. What we need to just add is margin top. Margin top can be 15 pixel. And if we save it and refresh, you can see that it pushed down a little bit. Now, let's look at how interesting our code is right now. You will see that on mobile view, you still have everything displayed just on a single row, which is ideal for smaller screen because you'll be able to view two things here, right? But if you look from our media query 768 pixel upward, you see that our item displays side by side and it looks neater and cleaner, which means we've utilized the bigger screen that we have. And that's where media query comes to play a very huge role. If you check the bigger screen, which is 1280, you can see that it's still displaying two per row. But to me, this is still huge. So we can still use our media query to still select larger screen and make them still display side by side. In fact, it is at this point that we need to maintain our design. So if we go back to our dashboard, there's the way our design is supposed to look which means the display is supposed to be by the side, the nav bar by the side, then this by the right. That is basically what we are going to be doing in the next lesson. I would advise you to actually look out for the next lesson. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all our social media handles so that you'll be notified each time we release a tutorial like this. Until next time, I'll see you in the next one.